Fantastic. Thank you so much indeed. All right. One of the great things about this symposium is it connects you to people you should know, you don't know, and people you didn't even know that you needed to know. Our next speaker is in that latter category. She is the founder and chief scientific officer of Microbia. When I said, oh, okay, so what exactly do you do? She says, I wrangle germs, right? Stand by for Sarah Richardson. Hello, I'm from biotechnology. <laughs> I came to talk to you today. So the title of my talk was They Studied It Before It Was Cool, How Basic Science Advances Technology. And I thought I would talk to you about basic science because from listening to the symposia today and the events yesterday, this is a very impact-driven crowd. You want to have an impact, you want to have an effect, and you are driven by that actual measurement of effect. And I come from basic science, and basic science is more, we'll figure out why we did it later. <laughs> and I think that I want you to think of basic scientists sort of like they are hipsters. <laughs> think of them as hipsters. They dress different. Now, I do have to apologize for the use of stock photographs for this. It's evocative. It's not meant to be accurate. Obviously, not all scientists look like that, or hipsters, right? But they are wearing different things. They're talking about things you've never heard of. They use a language that is very unfamiliar, and they're obsessed with it, and you have no idea what they're talking about. But then suddenly later, something that they were into is mainstream, and you can't live without it. You're using it all the time. That's basic science, except unfortunately, they don't always get the credit for it. You cannot tell if it's useful or not until you study it. This is the paradigm problem we have in basic science. People love their smartphones, they really do. And I hear a lot, okay, so how do we fund the next science that's gonna give us the next iPhone? And the answer is I can't tell you that. I can tell you that all of the basic science research funding, practically all of it comes from the government and when the government then turns around and says, well, we don't know why we paid for that or why are we paying for this, that they're, we're really kind of shooting ourselves in the foot. You won't know if it's useful or not until you study it, and it might be 20 years before the context comes around where that thing that that grad student slaved over is relevant to us. So take pity on the graduate student <laughs> that you meet, and they tell you they're studying some genetic regulation signaling cascade, and you say, why? And they go, <sighs> because 10 years later, that their work on that signaling cascade will be the bit of information that we need to solve a problem. It will be, it happens, it just happens late. So basic science is the art of doing your job so well that people forget that you did a job. All of these things are technologies that were made possible by observation and by basic science. So I have to admit to some bias here, I am obsessed with bacteria, that's my job. I make bacteria much more tractable. The top. Uh, left thing, I, oh, I skipped the most important one, alcohol. Alcohol, uh, some basic scientists a long time ago figured out that, you know, that sort of yucky looking stuff that got left overnight is actually pretty good. <laughs> they made an observation, somebody else built on that later and now we have craft beer, which is a technology that we have forgotten observation went into. Xanthan gum, all made in bacteria. There's one bacteria that makes xanthan gum, MSG all made in bacteria. That was an observation that was made that got turned into a technology that got leveraged into a food product. Olives are technology. Cows and chickens are technology. Somebody observed that these animals were useful and approachable. Somebody put the work into describing them, how you care for them, and now we've basically forgotten that. That's, you do your job well enough and it's like you didn't do anything at all. So technology is improved by feedback. I'm not saying that any of these things are perfect end stage technologies. We can still do basic science work into how those bacteria make such delicious cheeses. We're still not 100% sure in all cases how all of this works. What I would like to press too is that there is basic science to be done that is so far removed still from say application that it's so, sort of daydreamy to say how it will have an impact, but we still have to get the guts to do it. And to make you excited about it, bacteria. 
So the bacteria in the middle might be one that you guys would care quite a bit about. It's called Frankia, and it, endo it symbioses with plant roots to pull nitrogen directly from the air and feed it to the plant. You do not have to fertilize plants where Frankia is working on their roots. In fact, after the last ice age, when the glaciers pulled back, the nitrogen-poor soils where these bacteria symbiose with plants, 40% uh, of the pollen from that era is from their symbioses. The one in the top left, those are magnets in that graph, that line of dots. That bacteria makes its own magnets. What? We don't know how or why. I could think of ways that could be useful, but we have so much more work to do to figure out how and why that is very basic. The one on the top right, that makes rocket fuel from urine. I am not exaggerating. The one in the bottom left does something so prosaic, it's almost uh, pointless to mention, it turns light into sugar, just like a plant does, but it's not a plant. So basic science could one day help us achieve a lot of the goals that you have, that you have all brought up, but we need to have a bit of a gut for not knowing exactly why we're doing it yet. Thank you. Yeah, stay there, stay there, yeah, stay there. Just stand here, all right, thank you very much, all right, okay. So um, Sarah told me that when she often goes around and talks in schools, the kids are waiting to see the scientist. And they often go up to Sarah and say, what do they say to you, Sarah? Where's the scientist? <laughs> Why would they do that, Sarah? I don't look like a scientist. I do look like a hipster. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, spread the word. This is what a scientist looks like. Yeah.